Now, when we come to the left side, again, this is the external jugular vein, the clydomastoideus is being transected here. Okay, this is the sternocephalicus or the sternomandibularis. And when we reflect, when we reflect the parotid salivary gland, let me reflect it over there. You can see the tendon of the sternocephalicus going to the to the mandible. Okay? Now, if you look at the sternocephalicus, there is the nerve that come and innervate this muscle, and that is the ventral branch of the accessory, which is cranial nerve number 11. It runs deep to the parotid salivary gland. That's why you need to reflect the parotid salivary gland to expose the ventral branch of the accessory nerve. And this nerve is very important from the clinical aspect because in cases of creep, of creep biting, you do the modified forceps technique where you do bilateral neurotomy. You cut around 10 centimeters of this nerve on both sides, the left and, and the right. And also you transect a part of the sternothyroidus and the sternohyoidus and the omohyoidus muscle. This is the modified forceps technique to treat creep biting. And as you know, that is a behavioral disorder, so this is the nerve. Another clinical application or utilization of this nerve is for equine motor disease. Usually they take a piece and they do a biopsy of this nerve and they send it to the lab and they look at the demyelination. Uh, that is an indication of a neurological disorder. They call it equine motor disease. So the ventral branch of the accessory has two clinical significance for us. First, you do bilateral neurectomy to treat grip biting, that's number one. Number two, you, you take a piece or a biopsy of this nerve and you send it to the lab for diagnosis of equine motor disease. Uh, I wanna draw your attention now to another important area and that is the Vibor Triangle. And the Vibor Triangle is a triangle that formed by the tendon of insertion of the sternocephalicus or the sternomandibularis, which is this one here. The cranial boundary okay, is the mandible. And the cododistal boundary is the lingofacial vein. So this triangle here represent the Vibor triangle, and this give you access to the guttural pouches. Every time you have an infected guttural pouches, you wanna drain them, this is, could be your side of access. Again, the Vibor triangle, it is not a huge triangle, it's this triangle here in between the tendon of insertion of the sternocephalicus or the sternomandibularis, the ramus of the mandible cranially and the lingofacial vein codu distally you go through here this will give you access to the guttural pouches now once we are here um, i want to draw your attention to the relationship uh, between the external jugular vein the trachea and the esophagus, okay? Also beside the esophagus, you can see the carotid sheath is being, is being opened here, okay? This is the, the common carotid artery. This is the vagal sympathetic trunk. This is the internal jugular vein, okay? So, uh, the orientation and the relation of this structure to each other is important. 
Now, I want you to pay attention to the location of the esophagus in terms of the trachea. At the cranial aspect of the neck, the esophagus is sitting dorsal to the trachea. On the middle aspect of the neck, as you can see here, the esophagus is running lateral to the, to the trachea. While reaching the thoracic inlet, the esophagus will gonna go back at the dorsal aspect of the trachea before they get into the thoracic inlet. And this is of clinical importance every time you are inserting a nasogastric tube, you have to watch the nasogastric tube on the left side of the horse at the middle of the neck, because that is where the esophagus is lateral to the trachea. So while you are inserting the tube, you have to make sure that you can see it on the left side, because if you don't see that, there is a possibility that you may insert the tube inside the trachea instead of the, of the esophagus. So bear that in mind, every time that you are passing an endogastric tube, you make sure that you watch the tube as the left side of the neck. On the middle, you can see the tube over there, okay? Uh, again, this is the, okay, this is the carotid sheath here, it's been open. This is the common carotid artery, this big artery here. This is the vagal sympathetic trunk, okay? The muscle that you see here, okay, this is the cleidomastoideus, it's been transected, okay? The one at the top here, this is the omotransversarius. The muscle that you see here, this is the omohyoideus muscle. It runs on the medial aspect of the jugular groove, and we said it will provide some protection uh, to the external jugular vein, especially as the cranial aspect here, like if you mislead the direction of your needle, it will provide some protection to that. So this is the omohyoideus muscle, and it go and insert on the uh, Basy hyoid bone. This is the rest of it here. You can see it at this level here. 